Imagine if you would, the scenario of two men, both dedicated to improving themselves to the highest level possible. In fact, both want to be incredible data scientists, the most worthy of ambitions. Man A decides, okay, if I really want to get to that top level and get as smart as I can, I need to read all the books I can because knowledge is power and reading is like a free mentor, right? He picks up Atomic Habits, learns a load from that, then immediately jumps into the lean startup because business skills, right? And then to up his data science skills, he picks up practical statistics for data scientists, then Python for dummies, cracking the coding interview, building a second brain and all these books such that by the end of the year, he has consumed 52 books in 52 weeks. Man B, on the other hand, realizes that he has a lot of blind spots. He tells himself, there are a lot of books I could read, but honestly, I have no clue which of these books will take me closer to where I need to be. But I have researched some books and they seem useful. So what I will do is read one book at a time, absorb its most crucial aspects, and I'll implement what I can from those aspects into my real life and see what is truly useful. Only then, only after I have done this, will I pick up another book and repeat the process again. In the years to come, which of these two men will be more successful? I have been both of these men in past and present, and the greatest leaps in my career progression as a data scientist, as well as my general self-development, came when I changed my mindset to be that of man B. So in this video, I'll be making the argument why you should be reading less to learn more. Principle one, that book probably won't change your life. Many times we're on the hunt for the silver bullet, that single book that will be the inflection point that marks the start of the rest of our lives, rather than small milestones that represent incremental improvement that will take us to the level that we need to get to. In our search to reach that inflection point, we turn the pages eagerly because maybe, just maybe, that next paragraph will have the magic formula that will solve all of our problems. This means we rarely take the time to pause and wrestle with the ideas that are presented to us. Ideas that might actually change our lives because we are on the hunt for something even better. So you flip through all the pages and just mentally think to yourself, oh wow, what a cool idea. Can't wait to try that in real life or offhandedly mention it at a house party. And when you reach the end of the book, you're like, great, I learned a bunch. Let me pick up another book and learn even more. Or even worse, you're like, wow, that book was a complete waste of time. Let me pick up the next one. That one will have the valuable information. It's a never ending spiral and it's difficult because if you are on this side of YouTube, you know, obsessed with data science and general self-improvement, you probably follow a bunch of big YouTubers who every two weeks they have a new book that will change your life forever, for real this time. But honestly, you shouldn't really worry about reading the latest book. Instead, focus on getting the most from what you do read. This swiftly brings us onto principle two, which is the vital second step. How to get the most from the books you do read. And this breaks down into four further sub-principles. The first of which is read strategically. Before I pick up a non-fiction book, I ask myself two questions. Is there a particular area of my life I'm looking to improve at the moment? And is that a skill that can be improved through reading? A few years ago, I identified a problem within myself, which is that I was obsessed with improving myself, but I had zero focus. It was like I was shooting at a target with a shotgun from 100 yards away. I mean, I was working as a sports scientist, but I was reading literal books on Scrum and Agile. Why was I reading about Agile? But now I am much more strategic, like a sniper taking his time and firing only one shot, but hitting the target every single time. So for example, when I identified that focus was my problem, it was deep work by Cal Newport. And when consistency was my problem, it was actually Atomic Habits by James Clear that came in handy. But once you pick an area that you do want to improve, don't just pick up the first book that you Google. You need to research before you read because it will save you years of your life. For me, this primarily consists of reading reviews of the books, or if you like, there's YouTube videos summarizing almost any book that you want. But if it is a true pain point in your life, a 10 to 12 minute summary isn't going to be enough to give you the understanding of the core concepts. Instead, it will be enough to tell you, okay, this book does teach the concepts that I think it does. Now, I have permission to dig further into it. Real world people are also great sources of information just because they know you a lot better. So when they recommend books, it's more likely tailored to your particular situation. For example, this book, Think Like a Data Scientist, which has been my find of the year, 
was recommended to me by my line manager because he obviously could identify weaknesses in my data science game. So he figured this would help me and honestly, it's been insanely valuable. Okay, so now that you've addressed the pain point in your life and researched the book that you are going to read, make sure you do this. Stop lying to yourself. Your memory is not that great and you're not going to remember that cool concept from page 87 just by memorizing. AKA, take notes when you read. Listen, taking notes will force you to read slower and that means your brain is forced to interact with the information on a much more intimate level. Because you read a concept, decide it's worth writing down and then write it down. So it's sort of like active recall with three points of contact. But maybe even more valuable than that, it means that when you do get all these useful insights, they are stored somewhere, written in your words, and you can access them at a moment's notice. And over time, as you get more and more notes from different books into this repository, you go from vaguely remembering concepts about one or two books to having this well of information from which you can form interesting connections between seemingly unrelated ideas, which is basically what creativity and problem solving is. To make this note-taking process easier, what I tend to do is listen to audiobooks whilst I'm in the gym, and that makes it simple enough to be doing something else and then quickly jot down some notes between sets, although I'm sure some people in the gym hate me for doing that, but whatever. And at the moment, I do use OneNote just because it syncs across all of my devices, but I have been playing around with switching to Obsidian if someone in the comments can convince me. There is a next step if you want to take your learning to the next level. And listen, if you want a silver bullet, this might be it. After you read a book, simply make a short write-up in prose form of the most interesting ideas you found in that book. If you followed all the steps in this video, after you finish a book, you have a bunch of bullet points, which is pretty cool. It's a step up on what most people do but I want you to go one step further and actually write that out into sort of an article because this is once again forcing you to interact with that information and solidify those core principles. This is something I was doing well before I even started my data science and productivity newsletter just because I knew how valuable this could potentially be. But now all those notes I took before can easily be turned into videos which are useful for you guys or even newsletter posts which are just as valuable. But still all that information will be in my words and not your yours. So if you want to make it tailored to you, then you have to make your own write-ups. But hey, maybe you don't have the time to do that, which is where my newsletter comes in and I do summaries of books as well as real life learning and the next book that is gonna be looked at in that is this one, Think Like a Data Scientist, which like I said is my find of the year. But another important thing about getting the most from what you do read is knowing when to say when. It's good to finish what you start, but honestly, if you're a third of the way through a non-fiction book and you've gotten nothing from it, give yourself the permission to put that book down, okay? If the first third hasn't told you anything useful, it's unlikely that page 512 has that special source, okay? And if it does, the author has let you down. It's their fault for putting it that deep in the book, not your problem. And here's the last thing, the A word, my favorite word, action. Enforce a buffer between when you finish one book and give yourself permission to start the next book because within that buffer is where you do all your write-ups and solidify the concepts and then go out into the real world and experiment and see what is actually useful in your life. For me, an experiment I ran when focus was my problem was consistently doing those four hour blocks when I was studying for an exam. And it was so insanely useful, it's a practice that I've carried over into my working life. Everything in this video means that you will move through books much slower. In fact, at best I go through one book a month, but it's more like one every six weeks or so, depending on my schedule with life, the dissertation, the job, and this channel. But I also truly believe that I now learn at an accelerated rate because of these principles. So please, try out some of these principles and tell me in the comments what works for you and what doesn't. If you're new around here, I'm Data Nash, documenting my journey from being a newbie data scientist to one day being elite. If you're interested in that, hit subscribe and join the journey. And also check out my newsletter where I provide you real world insights from my day to day as a data scientist so that you can take action on it. If you did enjoy this video, check out this video where I summarize some of the key concepts from this book.